A peasant is a pre-industrial agricultural laborer or farmer, especially one living in the Middle Ages under feudalism and paying rent, tax, fees, or services to a landlord. In Europe, peasants were divided into three classes according to their personal status, slave, serf, and free tenant. Peasants either hold title to land in fee simple, or hold land by any of several forms of land tenure, among them sockage, quit rent, leasehold, and copyhold. The word peasant is and long has been often used pejoratively to refer to poorer landless farmers and agricultural workers, especially in the poorer countries of the world in which the agricultural labor force makes up a large percentage of the population. The implication of the term is that the peasant is uneducated, ignorant, and unfamiliar with the more sophisticated mannerisms of the urban population. The word peasantry is also commonly used in a non-pejorative sense as a collective noun for the rural population in the poor and underdeveloped countries of the world. Etymology The word peasant is derived from the 15th century French word paysant, compare Italian paisano, meaning one from the pays, or countryside, ultimately from the Latin pagus, or outlying administrative district. <laughs> Social position Peasants typically made up the majority of the agricultural labor force in a pre industrial society. The majority of the people in the Middle Ages were peasants. Though, peasant, is a word of loose application, once a market economy had taken root, the term peasant proprietors was frequently used to describe the traditional rural population in countries where smallholders farmed much of the land. More generally, the word, peasant, is sometimes used to refer pejoratively to those considered to be, lower class, perhaps defined by poorer education and or a lower income. Medieval European peasants The open field system of agriculture dominated most of northern Europe during medieval times and endured until the 19th century in many areas. Under this system, peasants lived on a manor presided over by a lord or a bishop of the church. Peasants paid rent or labor services to the lord in exchange for their right to cultivate the land. Fallowed land, pastures, forests, and wasteland were held in common. The open field system required cooperation among the peasants of the manor. It was gradually replaced by individual ownership and management of land. The relative position of peasants in Western Europe improved greatly after the Black Death had reduced the population of medieval Europe in the mid-14th century, resulting in more land for the survivors and making labor more scarce. In the wake of this disruption to the established order, later centuries saw the invention of the printing press, the development of widespread literacy and the enormous social and intellectual changes of the Enlightenment. The evolution of ideas in an environment of relatively widespread literacy laid the groundwork for the Industrial Revolution, which enabled mechanically and chemically augmented agricultural production while simultaneously increasing the demand for factory workers in cities, who became what Karl Marx called the proletariat. The trend toward individual ownership of land, typified in England by enclosure, displaced many peasants from the land and compelled them, often unwillingly, to become urban factory workers, who came to occupy the socio-economic stratum formerly the preserve of the medieval peasants. This process happened in an especially pronounced and truncated way in Eastern Europe. Lacking any catalysts for change in the 14th century, Eastern European peasants largely continued upon the original medieval path until the 18th and 19th centuries. Serfdom was abolished in Russia in 1861, and while many peasants would remain in areas where their family had farmed for generations, the changes did allow for the buying and selling of lands traditionally held by peasants, and for landless ex-peasants to move to the cities. Even before emancipation in 1861, serfdom was on the wane in Russia. The proportion of serfs within the empire had gradually decreased, from 45 to 50 percent at the end of the 18th century, to 37.7 percent in 1858. Topic: <laughs> Early Modern Germany. In Germany, peasants continued to center their lives in the village well into the 19th century. They belonged to a corporate body and helped to manage the community resources and to monitor community life. In the East they had the status of serfs bound permanently to parcels of land. 
A peasant is called a Bauer in German and Burr in Low German pronounced in English like Boer. In most of Germany, farming was handled by tenant farmers who paid rents and obligatory services to the landlord, typically a nobleman. Peasant leaders supervised the fields and ditches and grazing rights, maintained public order and morals, and supported a village court which handled minor offences. Inside the family the patriarch made all the decisions, and tried to arrange advantageous marriages for his children. Much of the village's communal life centered on church services and holy days. In Prussia, the peasants drew lots to choose conscripts required by the army. The noblemen handled external relationships and politics for the villages under their control, and were not typically involved in daily activities or decisions. 19th century France In his seminal book Peasants into Frenchmen, The Modernization of Rural France, 1880–1914 historian Eugen Weber traced the modernization of French villages and argued that rural France went from backward and isolated to modern and possessing a sense of French nationhood during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. He emphasized the roles of railroads, republican schools, and universal military conscription. He based his findings on school records, migration patterns, military service documents and economic trends. Weber argued that until 1900 or so a sense of French nationhood was weak in the provinces. Weber then looked at how the policies of the Third Republic created a sense of French nationality in rural areas. The book was widely praised, but some argued that a sense of Frenchness existed in the provinces before 1870. Use of the term for Chinese farmers Farmers in China have been sometimes referred to as peasants in English language sources. However, the traditional term for farmer, Nongfu, Nongfu simply refers to farmer or agricultural worker. In the 19th century, Japanese intellectuals reinvented the Chinese terms fengjian for feudalism and nongmen, nongmen or farming people", terms used in the description of feudal Japanese society. These terms created a negative image of Chinese farmers by making a class distinction where one had not previously existed. Anthropologist Myron Cohen considers these terms to be neologisms that represented a cultural and political invention. He writes, This divide represented a radical departure from tradition, F.W. Moat and others have shown how especially during the later imperial era Ming and Qing dynasties, China was notable for the cultural, social, political, and economic interpenetration of city and countryside. But the term Nongmen did enter China in association with Marxist and non-Marxist Western perceptions of the peasant, thereby putting the full weight of the Western heritage to use in a new and sometimes harshly negative representation of China's rural population. Likewise, with this development Westerners found it all the more «natural» to apply their own historically derived images of the peasant to what they observed or were told in China. The idea of the peasant remains powerfully entrenched in the Western perception of China to this very day. Modern Western writers often continue to use the term peasant for Chinese farmers, typically without ever defining what the term means. This Western use of the term suggests that China is stagnant, medieval underdeveloped, and held back by its rural population. Cohen writes that the "...imposition of the historically burdened Western contrasts of town and country, shopkeeper and peasant, or merchant and landlord, serves only to distort the realities of the Chinese economic tradition." <laughs> Burr in Jewish scripture A Burr is presented by the Rambam Maimonides as a person having neither ethical Torah education nor virtues of manners nor the ability to acquire them. Maimonides gives five definitions of Hebrew terms found in Jewish scripture, that discuss foolishness and wisdom, they are, in ascending order, Burr, Amhairetz, Golem, Kakam, and Chassid. The definition of the Hebrew term Burr is extracted by Maimonides from the phrase Sedabur, which translates as an uncultivated field. The Talmud and Mishnah Perk Avit 2, 4, also have this term, he r. Hillel used to say, a boor cannot be sin-fearing and an ignoramus cannot be pious, a bashful person cannot learn and a quick-tempered person cannot teach. 
Not everyone who increases belongings is wise and in a place where there are no royal men, try to be a royal man. Commonly, Bur would be translated into English as Boer. Historiography Since the literate classes have left the most records, and these tended to dismiss peasants as figures of coarse appetite and rustic comedy, the term peasant may have a pejorative rather than descriptive connotation in historical memory. Society was theorized as being organized into three estates, those who work, those who pray, and those who fight. The Annales School of French historians emphasized the importance of peasants. Its leader Fernand Braudel devoted the first volume, called The Structures of Everyday Life, of his major work, Civilization and Capitalism 15th-18th century to the largely silent and invisible world that existed below the market economy. Other research in the field of peasant studies was promoted by Florian Z. Naniecki and Fei Xiaotong, and in the post-1945 studies of the Great Tradition and the Little Tradition in the work of Robert Redfield. In the 1960s, anthropologists and historians began to rethink the role of peasant revolt in world history and in their own disciplines. Peasant revolution was seen as a third world response to capitalism and imperialism. The anthropologist Eric Wolf, for instance, drew on the work of earlier scholars in the Marxist tradition, such as Daniel Thorner, who saw the rural population as a key element in the transition from feudalism to capitalism. Wolf and a group of scholars criticized both Marx and the field of modernization theorists for treating peasants as lacking the ability to take action. James C. Scott's field observations in Malaysia convinced him that villagers were active participants in their local politics even though they were forced to use indirect methods. Many of these activist scholars looked back to the peasant movement in India and to the theories of the revolution in China led by Mao Zedong starting in the 1920s. The anthropologist Myron Cohen, however, asked why the rural population in China were called peasants rather than farmers, a distinction he called political rather than scientific. One important outlet for their scholarly work and theory was the Journal of Peasant Studies. Topic see also Agrarianism Family Economy Feudalism Folk Culture Peasant Economics Peasant Party Political Movements in Various Countries Peasants Revolt Petty Nobility Popular Revolt in Late Medieval Europe Serfdom Topic Related Terms Gopnik Alloer Boer Brachiante Campesino Churl Contadino Cotter Fela Free Tenant Hari Honbyakusho Katsias Krestianen Kulak Mujik Nongman Pagesos de Remenka Peon Surf Sharecropper Smurd Terran Tenant Farmer Vesson Villain Topic References Topic Bibliography Bix, Herbert P. Peasant Protest in Japan, 1590–1884 Cohen, Myron. Cultural and Political Inventions in Modern China, The Case of the Chinese Peasant, Daedalus 122.2 Spring 1993, 151–170. Evans, Richard J., and W. R. Lee, eds. The German Peasantry, Conflict and Community from the 18th to the 20th Centuries 1986, Hobbes Baum, E. J. Peasants and Politics, Journal of Peasant Studies, Volume 1, Issue 1 October 1973, pages 3-22 article discusses the definition of peasant as used in social sciences Macy, David A. J. Government and Peasant in Russia, 1861-1906, The Pre-History of the Stolypin Reforms 1987. Thomas, William I, and Florian Z. Naniecki. The Polish Peasant in Europe and America 2 volume 1918, Classic Sociological Study, Complete Text Online Free Wharton, Clifton R. Subsistence Agriculture and Economic Development. Chicago, Aldine Pub. Co., 1969. Print, O. Wolf, Eric R. Peasants Prentice Hall, 1966. Wolf, Eric R. Peasant Wars of the Twentieth Century Harper and Rowe, 1969. Topic Recent Akram Lodi, A. Harun, and Cristobal K., eds. Peasants and Globalization, Political Economy, Rural Transformation and the Agrarian Question 2009 Barkin, David. Who are the Peasants? Latin American Research Review, 2004, Vol. 39 Issue 3, pp. 270-281 Brass, Tom. Peasants, Populism and Postmodernism 2000, Brass, Tom. Class, Culture and the Agrarian Myth 2014, Brass, Tom, ed. New Farmers' Movements in India 1995, Brass, Tom, ed. Latin American Peasants 2003, Scott, James C. 
The Moral Economy of the Peasant, Rebellion and Subsistence in Southeast Asia 1976. External links <inaudible> <inaudible> <inaudible>